question is going to come i will suggest that you sit with uh, paper and pencil notebook and uh, whatever something to write with something to write on sit with that properly there are so many information for examination purpose is things are going to be a little bit detail you might not be required to remember but there will be some of them which are going to be really 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 important those things you need to you need to write okay those things you need to write so that you'll be able to remember properly you'll be able to uh, and a revise also it will help you in the revision right um this is the course book created by it's not actually a actually book but uh, it's actually a presentation created by architect kevin spina basically you will understand this whole thing like we understood about the indian one according to the timeline this uh, presentation also is according to the timeline we are going to understand a little bit about a prehistoric and some important things which figuratively you will need to remember and after that we'll talk about ancient civilizations where we'll discuss egyptian ottomans greek roman these will be four and after that we are going to enter towards classic period where it will be early christians a uh, little bit part of the groom uh, um, greeks also i think greek this this whole part is going to be the classic ancient between is merging towards the classic byzantine till there and romanas kana for that we are going to enter medieval period where romanas gothic renaissance all these things will do and after that neo classicism will do in between and the modern the whole timeline is like that do you want to written the timeline according to the period wise you can you can write it like that prehistoric that's a separate period prehistoric after that ancient civilizations there you will have egyptian ottomans uh, babylon and mesopotamia indus valley chinese then comes a uh, next period classic period there you will find greek roman early christians now from classic we are going towards medieval period there it starts this very early medieval period you will find byzantine romanas Byzantine, Romanas, Gothic, and late medieval period. That is, Gothic is like the central of medieval period. Late medieval period will be Renaissance, and after that comes Neo Classicism. After medieval period comes Neo Classicism period. There you will find uh, Baroque, Rococo. and uh, neo classical style typical neo classical style and after neo classicism you have modern period from uh, mid 19th century to whatever we are experiencing till whole uh, 20th century and after 20th century what we have 21st century that is called post modern so we don't have to look up to 20s post modern one not so much i didn't think so it might happen but let's see how it goes okay 
prehistoric in prehistoric couple of important uh, monolithic architectural pieces you will see first it starts with the caves so the way the prehistoric people used to live just have a look don't have to remember don't put pressure on your head about these ones okay here this one is going to be really important the cave paintings from africa france spain might be a little bit important okay so you just mention that the date used to trace back around 35000 years bce before christ 35000 years africa france and spain cave paintings right in prehistoric stonehenge is uh, one of the really famous dated back around uh, 2800 bc no one knows actually exact exact date is not able to uh, uh, calculate it but generally it considered to be very very old stonehenge in england just remember these okay now this thing is going to inspire future constructions of uh, palaces and uh, other type of building especially in the greek so this is really important by the way all right so just remember that the photograph of stonehenge and do write that while you will go through this pdf you will remember which one to look at and the information you will be able to extract faster right near east near east uh, is the area where we say now the gulf area usually dominated by uh, mesopotamian empire mesopotamian babylon and later it became persia and after that uh, ottoman empire so basically the area of egypt and uh, all those gulf countries including iran and uh, turkey and all this area was part of that during this period now this artifact what you see with a uh, lion body and head of the king and uh, eagle's wing that was the ideal representation of a uh, god and people used to uh, consider kings as a god they were form of a god itself they used to recognize like that humans only but they used to possess certain uh, power which used to make them feel like that so the name for that thing is colossal you just remember that colossal winged bull guarding chief portal right so this is sometimes is the bull some sometimes with a, a, a lion body also you will see this kind of things okay now this is from just remember is from mesopotamia okay after that uh, there was some concept of palaces especially ziggurats you just remember this type of design building this is called ziggurat around 2000 bce so just remember that architecture of ziggurats these used to be a uh, part of a temple the whole thing a temple there is a, on, on top uh, topmost area there is a temple for the deity So Jiguras is one of the magnificent efficient uh, architectural development of that time right now next is going to come the egyptian civilization egyptian civilization around the nile river giza to nubia and there are in between there are couple of uh, big cities used to be uh, settled up so um primarily think the egyptians they were around like you know desert kind of country but uh, uh, they were very rich because of uh, the richness of nile and uh, around the and uh, the the uh, all the area the field around nile used to be hugely fertile it used to have they used to have quite a huge business impact in all over area so now the kind of society they have developed pharaoh used to be the highest position and uh, uh, just like uh, colossals 
Farao's who used to hold the similar kind of power in the society, and uh, they used to create this kind of uh, very couple of thing you need to write in Egyptian. Uh, their um, script hieroglyph H Y R O G L I P H hieroglyph script is completely made with symbolism. It's all symbolic designs uh, conveyed and uh, used as a lit, you know, basically a language, a written text, a script. So that hieroglyph is one important development from there. Giza pyramid, Giza pyramid, Sphinx, S P I, S P H I, N X. Things. Now the architect who designed all these things, or you know, big part, there was like huge uh, team of architects. But one of the main one was I M H O N T E P. I M H O N T E P. It was his his idea to design such kind of magnificent uh, uh, triangular buildings. You know, as a pyramid. Okay, so you can see this. Is the, okay, this is this is what you see with lion body and the head of a human. This is called a sphinx. Now, sometimes with a goat also, depending on the requirement of this thing, sometimes goat, sometimes uh, some different animal, according to their iconography, they used to use this kind of uh, figurative representations. Right, so these are Imhotep, I M H O T E P, Imhotep designed by Imhotep. So here it's written also. Right, so pyramid of Giza, you just remember that, and the Sphinx, they will be fine. And rest are not so much memorable, so you can skip all these informations. Okay, this is fine. Right. Okay, now moving towards after the Greeks, of course, we are not looking towards Chinese. We don't have so much information as well as uh, you are not going to get any kind of questions also from Chinese. From the beginning of time, they are like very secretive. So Greeks, with the Greeks, we are entering towards a uh, classic period. And that it is back to around 1500 BCE to 300 BCE during that period there has been lot lots of big development in architecture especially because Greeks were quite a brilliant uh, mathematician engineers sculptors they were brilliant and they used to understand uh, you know the universal structure pretty good and all these people all these people you heard of socrates and uh, aristotle and there are so many other uh, pythagoras all those all those big mathematicians also they left they left quite a big uh, mark on their uh, these engineering and architectural developments so one of the primary development of architecture from that period from the greeks you will find out in the greek temples uh, they called uh, parthenon i think is written or not here but you just write that greek temples parthenon P A R T H E N O N Parthenon. Parthenon temple are these. Okay. This kind of representation you will see of temples. Why why it's not written here? This they should write this thing, Parthenon. Hey, you don't have to study all these important details of architecture. I don't think so. It will be required so much. And 
but you you can you can, you can give it a rate you can give it a rate you can draw also a little bit it might become part of uh, architectural vocabulary because so many things what you what you find in modern architectural development they were inspired from all these things primarily from bricks so this might include arise and billet coves uh covet all these things might the braces especially this kind of are some some of them are for me also I'm not an architecture student by the way i haven't been but for me also while we were studying these uh, culture these names feels like it uh, you know these are famous thing because i have heard of these things so you may look forward to these things just for a sake of knowledge a little bit because these buildings were very futuristic and they have inspired the futuristic development as well right and uh, from this parthenon uh, temple structure couple of these pillars they were really famous so in that you find uh, doric doric one is a very simple style of uh, pillar that's called doric second is ionic where you will find out that the pillar is getting little bit embellishment done it's not very simple is is not very exaggerated also and uh, ornamented but it's there is some design element has done on top of that that is called this type of pillars called uh, uh doric uh, sorry uh, ionic doric is the most simple one just round structure no embellishment nothing now there is a, there is one type of pillar which is highly embellishment you know ornament ornamentation has been done on top of that with carving this is a carved out uh, stones big stones but very ornamented way that's called uh, corinthian corinthian yeah you is know, corinthian corinthian yes so that's the three types of uh, uh, different different embellishment you will see on the pillars from greeks just remember that okay now all these temples which used to be designed like the temple of hera this these are the basically greek uh, you know the greek civilization gods and goddesses the parthenon temple or temple of nike aptors aptors artemis temple so all these things they have all those uh, design details okay so this will be enough i think for right yeah okay this is fine all right next is going to be roman and romans also used to be roman and greeks and they are very very close to each other by the way look at that and there were and the greeks they have inspired the roman civilization on a on a very large scale in fact their gods and goddesses also used to be kind of greeks only just they used to have different names but they used to be the same gods and goddesses so their temple architecture and everything also you'll find it's like kind of similar thing you can see that you can actually see that right this is a similar like uh, corinthian what you saw in the last one this is similar like doric what you saw in the first one simple one right they might be having some different name by the way here yeah okay so the similar kind of thing you'll find one big thing from roman you will see is the roman colosseum that was one of the big development in architecture there and is still there um it comes under now seven wonders of the world what in the last one which was selected seven wonders of the world the roman colosseum also is there right uh, mosaic art couple of things they developed newly the romans and their temples looks almost same only so yes like the greek ones now this one is the roman colosseum which used to be a back then the largest theater in the world is still right now there is no theater which is as large as uh, colosseum all right so now this this is called the classic period early christians don't have to pay so much attention on these it's okay not so much important st peter's rome that's fine 
what is going to be important after this thing is byzantine byzantine was one of the ground breaking development in architecture and you will see one of the magnificent design remember this mosaic art it was developed during roman period it was taking shape of big art during byzantine period so all you need to see one thing you need to uh, uh, understand that every period which is coming the previous one it always influences the next one you will find some kind of similarities but on a very larger and very experimental uh, way that the next period will be having its own mark as well so byzantine what kind of thing is you will expect from byzantine the introduction of domes that was the one of the biggest development from byzantine which uh, the influence of dome structures and those kind of designs you find till the modern age as well centralized plan basilica plan early christian domed and centralized central uh, centralized plan that was the plan of byzantine centralized means the main deity and one thing you need to remember about these things whatever you studying this kind of big architecture development used to happen only for uh, you know religious purposes or maximum for religious purposes like 99% you may say like that so all these things what you are saying is what you were able to see here these are not uh, someone's personal property or something the whole state used to invest themselves their skills and everything to create these things now one of the biggest example of byzantine you see hagia sophia in uh, istanbul uh, hagia sophia was constructed as church initially but later on ottoman empire took a big leap on the near uh, the turkish area they uh, you know took those things they got into influence of uh, islamic thing and they converted the whole whole uh, st- uh, the building into a mosque and later on what happened that uh, they found out they you know some uh, order involved it came like that catholic churches also fo- fought for that the whole thing was converted into uh, a museum hagia sophia remember this one this was very much in limelight last year because uh, ardwan uh, mohammed ardwan is mohammed ardwan some some kind of ardwan ardwan is his uh, his main name uh, president of turkey he converted again that uh, museum into a mosque so of course is the area is dominated by uh, by them so they are like you know converting them into uh, anyway but that that doesn't matter the most important thing is that the magnificent structure of this centralized plan of hagia sophia which become really important back then and still is important till this date as well so that's was the byzantine style creation of dome after the byzantine you will see romanas romanas there uh, the church cathedrals they started coming in light and they started creating a basilica plan for the cathedrals you'll find out a round structure for these arches that was the one of primary development during byzantine period sorry romanas period romanas we are talking about romanas okay so this kind of structure whenever you find in any building just get it right away it's belong it belongs to romanas period okay then pisa cathedral you see all the arches on the windows from the entry gate and everywhere it's arc okay it's done in arc way now this arc thing the christianity use started growing a lot and they started creating larger larger building slowly slowly the idea of creating a large structure converted the arc kind of structure 
of uh, the entrance gate and all the arches into a pointed structure okay is so the arch uh, the arches instead of being uh, circular curvy it started becoming into pointy uh, structure and that gave birth to gothic period so next what you see in gothic period till here we understood about this uh, till the romanesque part after that medieval you know the this is the center of medieval period gothic in gothic it's not only architecture but slowly slowly art started coming out of architecture and started having its own uh, uh you know basically they started creating their own space for the artists uh, artistic expression paintings and other other form of artistic expression as well and what we are talking about the arches now you can see this pointy arch which is going curved but there on the top this is little bit pointy is angular that was the con that that was achievement of uh, gothic and with the help of that because the physics works like this I'll send you a couple of videos about this one, how this works basically. So it works like that. That they started creating a very huge, very large height for these uh, uh, these cathedrals, and creating that large, large height was the idea to influence people to create a very idealistic image for a god. And uh, people who will come around, they will you know. Uh, they will get influenced uh, easily about that you, can you see this the one this is structured here now these are the uh, you know the demons everywhere on the churches you'll find out is decorated with demons someone who is coming from outside they will see the demons and they will get afraid this is like <laughs> perfect business plan no perfect business plan but anyway we'll not comment about uh, their authenticity on the authenticity and uh, credibility or something but basically if you're going there if you're watching so many demons you will get an influence that you know just enter the premises of the cathedral and uh, go uh, seek say, shelter un under god and under under jesus basically the son of god so that was the whole whole structure and this is how they used to plan these things okay so these are very very huge height very huge height one of the primary uh, building from that you see notre dame paris that's one of the uh, most recognizable architectural piece from gothic period notre dame paris remember that one right big big castle that was also plan of gothic period only creating big huge castles right cathedrals castles and all this stuff okay so all right that's gothic now after the gothic one of the big development is going to happen which is going to change the whole world primarily starting from europe but the impact is going to be everywhere so the kind of power the church is used to hold in the society it started becoming questionable and during the period of uh, uh, renaissance which came after gothic that was considered to be the period of rebirth renaissance you need to write that this one here renaissance remember this one really important the renaissance means rebirth the era of humanization the era of seeking knowledge not just believing in things and representing their ideas of uh, uh, okay so renaissance is starting from here now this era of rebirth was about explorations of social development not rather than just idealizing a god or something there were uh, iconographic paintings representations done by so many great artists during the renaissance period 
but it was much more of a humanistic approach people started studying like you know the leonardo da vinci michael angelo and all these great uh, architects and artists they started uh, understanding the human human is you know they started taking the humanization approach to understand the human life better to make it much more scientific to make it much more relevant and uh, understanding the social structure and understanding the conspiracy theories to debunk them and guide you know the basically art is the job of artist happens to be you know they used to get inspired from the society and they used to create their artwork to influence the influence the society in a better direction that was a kind of power artists also used to hold and still they hold these day also we call it graphic designers primarily these days not many art pieces what you see but right now whatever you see the although uh, they, <laughs> according to the requirement of business uh, the artist of uh, new age uh, as we had the artists of old days similarly they do uh, manipulate people with their visual skills and uh, they sell their products it used to happen back then also but the basic idea behind that that if we have such kind of power such kind of influencing power we should be working for good side and so many during renaissance period renaissance period they did work on a good thing so renaissance period the development in uh, st peter's basilica what you see is one of the biggest develop architectural development from that period the architects there are so many uh, you know numbers of architects were there primarily the dome which you see the dome structure designed by michael angelo and there were these many architects you know abramantes rafael they are some uh, famous one right uh, you don't have to remember all of them but yeah rafael you may remember that one you remember bernini was really important for their interior all these uh, uh sculpture what you see inside the st peter's basilica is done by bernini uh you remember Mar- michael angelo is going to be really important the whole dome structure is done by michael angelo of this st Saint- peter's basilica in vatican city okay right so you remember that one and uh, some important uh, sculptures will be nice if you remember them especially the sculptures done by michael angelo and bernini rafael used to do a lot of painting by the way and uh, michael angelo also used to do a lot of paintings inside the uh, the dome inside the church uh, the cathedral St Peter's Basilica there is a big painting painted on the ceiling it's done by Michael Angelo it's a very famous painting by the way uh the creation of adam you may write that because sometime you never know that that kind of thing might come right so that's renaissance after the renaissance period you'll find out rococo baroque uh, bar so first came baroque which was very much embellished kind of structure you see in the baroque period okay we are coming here so here it the baroque period was okay for one thing the baroque and rococo was primarily focused on interior interior designing not like a uh, architectural big architectural development but they were primarily for interior designing so um the very embellished beautiful exaggerated embellished means gold was gold silver even metallic kind of uh, uh, colors used to be a big thing in baroque and rococo style and baroque and rococo was not primarily done for religious purposes or iconography or something it was possessed by those style possessed by some uh you know the private owners they used to own those things now you will uh, you need to understand this part that how this uh, the whole religious kind of development converted into privatization of things how people started people started getting a uh, lot of uh, wealth and power in the society not just the state it happened because of uh, uh, industrial revolution and the starting period of industrial revolution was the renaissance itself 
right during uh, uh, 16th century that was the period uh, the mid renaissance was around around that time or maybe the late renaissance which started given in 1600 only in india also east india company was started in 1600 so before before that only you know, in six, early early 16th century the industrial revolution started taking shape and the you know the private players started gaining lot of control and power the one who used to have business so that's how it took shape and uh, baroque and rococo you got to see this thing baroque and rococo thing how beautiful that looks it looks bit it looks a little bit exaggerated also you know so not necessarily that it will be beautiful only because it is little sometimes it's too much rock baroque was still little bit you know in control but rococo came like my god okay can you see this this designs highly embellished this is baroque feels like rococo this is the development of baroque rococo you will see everything is gold r o c o q o rococo a look at that my god so much so much gold now this is the style is primarily done on the interior not just architecture thing architecture is basic only but it's heavily heavily embellished heavily embellished might not prefer you know modern days people of course and to do this kind of thing you need a lot of money for that it's not easy to get this done but this is like magnificent design man look at that wow color combination and everything is like uh, too much rich so let's focus on our garibi uh anyway rococo after that uh, uh, baroque and rococo industrial revolution opened it started like uh, uh, people can do anything they were so excited oh so many technologies being developed they can do anything but later on it took shape because of the industrial revolution so many good things also happened the death rate went uh, down pretty fast because of development in uh, health sector uh, the ease of uh, transportation the ease of doing business and so many development happened that started creating a little bit easy easy thing easy approach in human life people have started growing their population started growing rapidly and slowly slowly it took a shape of a different approach which was drive by the needs and there is one very famous uh quote from a great architect i don't remember the name but you can you can write that quote which is which was given during uh, the ending of neo classicism we'll discuss neo classicism later right here i think it's is it there it's not there i think it's there only the 18th 19th century what you are what you are looking at this is the neo classicism period so um the quote was the um, okay the form follows function and that was the birth of modern period where the embellishment became secondary issue and primarily it was all about fulfilling the need a basic you know first experiential based things not heavily embellished but it has to be functional more and after that the form will develop according to little be requirement here and there so the idea was to form follows function not function follows form first is requirement is the function and after that the form will be created accordingly so the first idea of that thing what you find uh after this first let's talk about the some couple of uh, big uh, buildings development during uh, neo classicism period neo classicism just write that neo classicism in the usa you see by the white the white house that is one of the biggest example of neo classical building the white house the white house of that you see in england uh the birmingham palace in india also because india was under british and victorian architecture 
is uh, it's also is you know the, the part of primary part of neoclassicism the victorian architecture which influenced the victoria memorial in kolkata raisina hills what you see the president house in delhi india gate uh, your uh, parliament uh, building you know, the gateway of india in mumbai uh, mumbai cst railway station all these things are uh, part of neoclassical structure neoclassical design okay so just write that victorian early victorian high victorian and blah blah all this stuff right now the form follow function then came the form follow function and that gave birth to modern architecture and the first modern architecture this one is considered to be first modern architecture by the way uh am house richard turner okay this guy i think this guy only it's only said this thing form for function richard turner right so this is the first design which was done by previously it, it used to be to do the pillars and all this stuff there was use of uh, stones and uh, bricks used to be in use industrial revolution when we started getting iron on a very large quantity because of the mining and all these structures started taking shape with primarily the structure done with iron and on top of that covered with a plastic material glass material and so many other things other artificial materials the crystal palace london is considered to be one of the biggest uh, okay so one of the most remarkable building in 19th century this was done for a uh, exhibition in 19 uh, in 1851 okay so crystal palace remember that and please look at the some good photographs of the crystal palace right uh, later on one big development what you see uh, it's done in a modern period by the way but the influence is from gothic period i think this is the one no this is not the one there is a building designed by um sagrada familia sagrada familia designed by what's his name and sagrada familia that's one of the greatest architect architect of the all time i'm forgetting his name antony gaudi yes antony gaudi sagrada familia in barcelona spain the um sagrada sagrada familia all this structure inspired from a gothic by the way but done in a modern period uh, inspired by gothic not like gothic inspired by gothic but his development antony gaudi's development was completely based on complex mathematics and geometry especially right it's just that couple of arches you find is looks like a little bit pointy it feels like a gothic architecture but uh, it was just inspiration right now this building was started getting into construction around 1924 and after that sorry uh, when it was started early 19 yeah uh, okay 1882 and it was uh, 70% of this building was completed till 1924 when Anthony Gaudi died right Anthony Gaudi so Anthony Gaudi when he died uh 26 okay so in 1926 Anthony Gaudi died and after that 30% building was left that that was a very you know huge cathedral by the way so it's uh, again it's a cathedral only and Anthony Gaudi was a very religious person very very religious person he used to feel the god in himself so that was the situation with him he used to see things which no one was able to see or think actually 
now that 30 percent development is still going on and people are thinking the scientists and all these uh, architects who are working on that they are hoping that this will be con con completed uh, in uh, 2024 till 2000 they have the date so you can think like that it took hardly 40 years to complete 70 percent and 30 percent it has taken more than 100 years so it is very complex there is a whole uh, documentary on AT Anthony Gaudi on Netflix I guess you should watch that all the, all of you are uh, you know architect aspirants you should look at these kind of inspiration in your life and to become a brilliant architect tab ja ke kuch hoga just studying architecture whatever you are studying is not a uh, some tiny thing or some kind of career option you are taking for yourself it's a big big you have to invest your whole life and passionately for this thing anyway so just was that uh, uh, documentary of anthony gaudi you will left inspired like anything it was amazing anyway uh, so this is the development what we are talking about of modern period and uh, the crystal palace was one of the biggest development uh, of early early modern period later on the structure the industrial structure took uh, took over on on all over the world the, the structure uh, the construction and everything and people started getting crazy crazy building with that and some of them like what you see this one um, the Eiffel Tower in France when this architect started designing this thing and having this idea about uh, the Gusto Eiffel uh, by who is this that Koslin what is Koslin having this idea people say like okay you you have turned out to be mad this kind of thing which should not be it's, it's not going to happen it's not going to be complete it's not thing like that or something like that like no whatever the useless it, this thing is but he had the idea he created and now it's a uh, one of the biggest uh, development is considered in architectural history so there's so many different kind of thing later on you find in the modern period uh, there's so many architect who came in line that primarily if you see Jaha Hadid no one can think that okay this also this kind of thing also will be possible uh, in architecture as well because that was you know quite absurd idea but later on you know uh, all these people started just re uh, remember all these names these are Frank Lloyd, uh, Lloyd uh, Wright, Oscar Neymar, uh, Eric uh, Mandel Mandelson all these people are really really important these architects they primarily worked on basically uh, functional buildings and that used to be according to the requirement of the need they used to be very beautifully designed structure also but only for some specific purposes like sports stadium or some kind of uh, theater or museums and things like that but primarily things used to happen according to the need of the functionality now we are talking about uh, the modern period okay so these are the couple of very important examples here what you see uh, considered to be iconic buildings iconic architectural development of the world just remember them okay art deco is one of the style is going to be which is uh, one of the big thing which uh, developed primarily in architecture only a uh, little bit in interior designing and couple of things you will see in painting as well art deco style but it was primarily architecture the Chrysler building in New York designed by William Vaughn Allen that's art deco style which is one of the very famous building in the world the World Trade Center just remember that one Sydney Opera House and all these things will be important for you okay so just remember that Try to recognize these buildings, what you see, at least recognize the period by looking at uh, these things, uh, their characteristics and everything you'll be able to recognize also. So, Acha, one more thing I forgot to tell you about uh, Gothic, where we are doing the Gothic. The pointy arches 
and flying buttresses so you can see this repeated pattern which is supporting the high rise buildings everywhere these are called flying buttresses so this was also one of the biggest idea uh, developed which helped to create very large size buildings just write that in uh, gothic period right so this is what we started there now little bit about islamic arabesque arabesque is uh, one of the uh, uh, terminology which is used for uh, islamic influence designs architectural designs arabesque a r a b e s q u e arabesque decoration islamic mosaic art and uh, uh, tessellation tessellated uh, patterns geometrical patterns that is one big part you see and indo this is by the indo islamic there you will find little bit indian influence also so whatever you see in the indian one home to my tomb of himayu or taj mahal or things like that it was a part of medieval period by the way okay it, it happened during medieval period so you can see that and also a uh, little bit part of uh, indian thing especially is has been given separately here so you can have a look of them couple of these important uh, developments from the indians and couple of them there are about the chinese also but anyway just chill about that chinese are like just a pagoda they need to remember just the pagoda but if they are like by the way this is a the they are tibetan buddhist architecture not like chinese architecture so maybe now it's in under china but remember this are tibetan buddhist anyway so that's all you need to remember for architecture history good luck to you and i think there are some questions also now there are right okay i'll send you this uh, pdf this pdf to goro sir goro sir will send it to you all right sir is history important there might be couple of aptitude uh, questions and once you understanding history you will understand lots of uh, architectural vocabulary also so yeah it will be important and nice also to know and the information what you have written you have to remember that much information only you don't have to go in deep in this pdf there are so many details are there you may ignore that but whatever you have noted down open the video open this pdf and uh, just go through those parts one more time so that you just remember at least remember figuratively because anything will be coming mostly the chance is that it will come figuratively and you just have to maybe recognize that or something so little bit of things just remember that okay anything anyone has any question okay enjoy i think your class is over gaurav sir the classes are over right gaurav sir is there thank you right so natak's classes are over and uh, uh we'll give them mock test papers i'm sending you all the mock test papers okay accordingly you just organize that okay okay